Hi guys, on this episode I have an interview with James McBain, the frontman and the man in Hellripper. I saw Hellripper live here in Prague the other day and I made the review up here. I was kind of blown away, so I wanted to know more. So I asked him, how was this tour with Abbott and Toxic Holocaust? How is it to tour with your idols? Because one of those bands is one of his favorites of all time. How COVID actually enhanced his abilities as a businessman so that he can actually make a living from Hellripper. How that was never supposed to be his main gig. He actually went to university to study something completely different. How Hellripper can be a role model for young and aspiring musicians. And also he shared some lights on the upcoming album and some details on that. Plus we discussed the purpose of life. Good morning, James McBain, Hellripper. How are you today? Hello, man. I am doing very well. Thank you very much. Back from tour, had a, yeah. a, few, a couple of days rest, and now back, back to the usual. <laughs> and what's the usual? Um, yeah, uh, packing and sending orders from the the band camp, the web store, um, writing and recording music, um, mm. and then dealing with like emails and the business side of things. You know, like just admin and finances and all that kind of stuff. So just everything else aside from touring. <laughs> well, how, how was the tour? I mean, how, how were these 35 days? Was it, uh, what's the feeling? What's the verdict afterwards? Yeah, it was amazing. One, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't know what to expect because it was our first one of this kind. You know, we were the opening band out of three for bigger bands and the venues were bigger than what we would usually play and um, stuff like that. And, you know, it's always difficult when, it's always difficult to tell how things will go when it's a new experience and especially from what I've like we were the opening band sometimes we would play at like uh half past six you know mm. 6 p.m um you know you, you never know what to expect but yeah the, the whole the tour was great it was better than any expectations I had I, I came to see you here in Prague and uh, <laughs> and that was one of those gigs where where you played at like six or something because that club yeah kind of doubles as a nightclub so it kind of had to start early and i was a little bit skeptic when i when i went there because uh i thought there would, wouldn't be anyone to see you guys but it was kind of yeah. a packed house and everyone was super into you guys i mean people seem to know your music and so on was that the yeah. kind of the overall experience that you were playing for a crowd that already knew you um we did have people that knew us for sure at, at all the gigs um i'm not sure if most of them knew us or if most of them were just kind of there you know to to be there for the whole gig you know that you can i can never mm -hmm. tell but yeah people seem to be into the band for the most part you know we had almost every show we had like yeah good response and people were going crazy and stuff um but yeah the prague gig was crazy like yeah, you I thought, it was insane like you, i thought yeah half past six or whatever there might be a a quiet one for the yeah. for the audience you know like um you know it might just be a standing standing and watching kind of show but no it was crazy they were Everyone was in the mosh pit. Everyone was like stage diving and, um, yeah, going going nuts. So, yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> but you bring that energy. I mean, James, like, uh, I, I I go. I think I told you when I met you there. I, I go to see over hundred bands per year because you know there is so much that comes through here. I mean, this includes, of course, festivals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there are not a lot of bands that I have seen that uh, are able to kind of produce this kind of stage energy somehow from first minute to the last and i was wondering how it feels for and i mean that obviously affects the fans a lot you know because you know yeah. people want, want this is what we want you know and uh, i get goosebumps now when i talk about it, it was so fucking great but uh, anyway uh, then i was thinking okay so how is it then to, to go home when it's done you know because i guess you kind of have to keep yourself a little bit pumped the whole time you kind of bring that energy on the stage the whole time every night you got to be yeah. switched on and then all of a sudden you're home yeah i mean yeah it's definitely different um, <laughs> um but yeah i i love being at home I, it's uh -huh. i love um writing music and i love you know being in my own space and just yeah listening to music doing the writing music and like watching stuff you know while i while i do other tasks and stuff so yeah, it's definitely a different vibe, you know, going from being around, what, 20 people every day, like 20 of the crew and band every day, and then like hundreds of fans and people in a venue and speaking to everyone, and then coming back here to like quiet and mm. no one around. It's definitely different. And yeah, yeah. I, I like both. Um, from, so from going out on a tour like this, 
does that do you feel that there is something in there that you can then will take into your songwriting now you, you i don't know do, do you know what i mean is there a... yeah 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 i know what you mean um um probably subconsciously you know mm. like i probably get an idea for you know what songs work live and stuff you know what kind of thing people respond to and stuff like that or you know being around other bands and watching bands every night maybe that that's prop that's probably going to like creep mm. creep into like like the, the will probably influence at some some point but um yeah i don't really think about it you know i try and when i'm writing and all that i just kind of go with what comes naturally these bands that you toured with i saw that uh, at least one of them toxic holocaust you mentioned in another video that i or interview that i watched that they are kind of one of your main influence bands you know mm. how is it to to kind of get out there on the road with uh, uh, people like this that have been doing this for you know over 20 years and then above as well you know um is it like uh are you starstruck or, or you know like uh, how does this work yeah i mean kind of i mean the whole the whole existence of hell ripper when i've um just dealing with all these bands that i love you know we've I, we're lucky enough to have played or I've spoke with or played with um, loads of my influences and loads of my um, people that have inspired me and stuff. You know, Toxic Holocaust, of course, are one of the main reasons that Hell Ripper exists. Um, mm. Just the whole way everything was done, you know, a one man band kind of DIY at home, um, the style of music, everything was kind of one of the main reasons hell ripper exists so that was crazy um mm. and yeah of course joel's a nice guy and the other guys in the band like um are great guys and yeah, it's really weird to be in a similar circle or whatever you would say to these people and yeah i'm just grateful for it i mean i'm i try and just get on with things and try not to you know annoy anyone and try and just no, try not and... asking for an autograph every day no no um <laughs> Yeah, I try and just get on with things, and yeah, yeah it's like it's crazy. I don't, you, yeah. When I think about things, you know, like oh, we, I became friends with this person, or we played with this person, or whatever. It's really weird. Mm. If you told me a few years ago that these things would happen, it's very, yeah, it's amazing. It's I'm I'm very grateful that I'm in this position, and I'm very lucky that it's that it's happening. Yeah. But yeah. uh, th this, so this was kind of the second big tour, let's say. And I guess because your your first full album mm -hmm. came in two thousand and seventeen, and then you had another one in two thousand and nineteen. So you, I guess, COVID in some sense, uh, let's say, affected your ability to, to go out and and do a proper tour. Or mm -hmm. or or, yeah. But is that like, do you feel that it slowed you down, or did it enhance you in some way? Because you are a one man show, not yeah. just with the music, but also with all the merchandising and all the stuff yeah um yeah it was it's difficult to say because yeah in 2020 when uh, we obviously we signed to peaceville which was a kind of a then a bigger step for us and then yeah the the album came out in 2020 we had a, a couple quite a few tours planned we had a, like a, a uk tour planned we had our first european tour planned with midnight which would have been you know our biggest to date and it was i can't remember how long it was but yeah it was a big one and it was visiting all sorts of places throughout Europe. Um, and obviously that everything got cancelled. Um, and we only played like what two or three live shows in 2020 and 2021. Um, because of everything. Um, so it definitely slowed us down on the touring front, but I think it also kind of helped us or me personally because the band seemed to kind of grow during that time just being online and just mm. um you know through posts and through having a new album release and um yeah so i think there was negatives and positives um mm. i can't really say i guess for you like home office was not, not a new thing <laughs> i mean like you you've been working yeah. on on your things i mean i listened to this uh podcast this iblis manifestations i think yeah, it's yeah. called the, and uh that was kind of uh, because I was, yeah, I was. I, I think I, I got to know your music around 2020 or something like that, and uh, and then I, I came across this interview and I listened to it, and I, I was, what was fascinating to me is how much you're doing not just on the music side but also on the business side, and the reason why I mentioned if COVID has actually kind of uh, 
helped you or in some ways because that I can see that you're really good with all the social media presence. You created yeah. that gold cult thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and as far as I could understand from that podcast interview, then you've been able to kind of make a living from being Hellripper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm so grateful for it since, mm -hmm. um, 2019, I think Hellripper has been my full-time job and, and yeah, I'm very grateful for everything, you know? Um, so yeah, in that respect, like the COVID and stuff didn't change anything in the way I worked because it was just mm -hmm. coming in here and doing what I usually do. Um, the only way I could promote my stuff was social media. That was the only, mm -hmm. literally like the only method. Um, and so I kind of learned or tried to learn the best I could how to, how to work on social media and work online and be a band online um and yeah things kind of just yeah things kind of grew naturally they grew gradually you know it was never a big a massive step you know it was never like we had 10 fans and then the next day we had a million fans it was never <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah it was never a huge jump like that which i'm grateful for you know that would be cool and uh but i'm glad that the it's been gradual and so i can adapt and i can learn and i can hmm. You know, I'm not overwhelmed by the amount of like work that would suddenly come your like suddenly come up. You know, just kind of going from you know with a one you know a one percent increase, you kind of learn to adapt to how much the workload and how much stuff you've got to do, how many emails to answer, people to respond to, orders to pack and stuff. You know, it's kind of gradually increased, and so yeah instead of so you're kind work. of able to follow up your skill set as well you know like you, yeah. you take you you learn and then you grow and then you learn from the growth yeah exactly and it's not like i say yeah, it's never been a one to a hundred so i've never had to like i had to go like full like panic mode and be overwhelmed and have to you know have to get something done and have to learn a lot in one in one like a, a short time or whatever um mm. Was there ever a plan B? I mean, was there ever James McBain, the, the oil driller or James McBain, the fisherman or James McBain, the lawyer? Yeah. So I went to university to do uh, computing science and then business IT. Mm. And I graduated in 2018, I think. But yeah, just when I graduated, it was uh, that was when Hellripper was kind of taking off. And so I never really done anything with that other than mm. kind of use any skills to apply to Hellripper. So yeah, I mean, there was kind of a plan. I mean, that was kind of the plan A. Hellripper was kind of the, the plan Bobby. B. Yeah. Yeah. Hellripper was never, I never really, I didn't, you know, I'd been told and everyone says you can't, you can't make a living from being in a band, like all that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, fair enough. It'll just be a kind of side thing and I'll do a, like a, a, a normal, job that's and you you're, you're hard working though i mean i could see that i could see that here on the gig i mean you were in the merch stand already before the gig you were there immediately after you came off the stage um i bought the wrong size t-shirt so i had to come back to exchange and you were still there like an hour and a half or something after the gig finished um and uh, like and i know and i know as i said from previous uh, uh things that i've listened to you, you sit at home and you work on those things i mean it's not yeah. like you you just write a cool song and then you put it on, on on spotify and then you wait for the money to roll in i mean like you you are probably working 12 to 16 hours a day on something yeah. hell ripper related right yeah yeah exactly yeah it's yes yeah, it's, it's hard work a lot of people mm. you know making a living from music most people kind of think you write some songs and then you kind of leave it sit to back, the, yeah. yeah sit back leave it to the labels and the managers and the whoever you know but yeah hell is, is basically just me of course there's a label um yeah i do all the management and all the that kind of thing we've got a booking agent who handles the live show stuff but yeah for me i'm working like yeah probably around 12 hours a day doing something um mm. whether it's writing music or organizing the logistics to shows you know flights and hotels and timings and stuff like that or yeah, sending out orders like the the orders um, from the band camp, um, you know, ap approving and getting t-shirt t-shirts and merch printed and stuff like that, and yeah, d yeah, and press and social mm -hmm. media um, interviews, yeah, interviews, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So, wow. um, 
yeah especially when there's like something happening you know when there's a new album coming out or whatever it's just non-stop like completely non-stop for however long mm. um and but yeah, you get yeah. to work with your passion. I mean, you get to do yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what well, you like. Yeah. Yeah. There's no complaints from me at all. I love doing every bit of it. Oh. You know, I like, I like the business side of it as well. I like dealing with all the, the admin business, whatever you want to call it, that side of things. And I love the music side of things. So I've got no, I've got no complaints at all. When I say I work like loads and work 12 hours a day or whatever, it's, it's, I, it's not really work for me. Yeah. It like, doesn't I, feel like work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, I work hard, but it's difficult and stuff. I mean, I mean, it is sometimes difficult, but I love every bit of it. It's not mm. no complaints at all. And I'm grateful that I'm able to do it, you know? Mm. Um, so people can make a living from doing music. If you, you know, um, work hard and you make the right decisions and stuff, because there is a lot of, you know, I do everything myself because the more people you get involved and stuff, you will, mm. obviously everyone, you need to, you need to pay everyone that you work with and stuff like that. So me taking over the management and the, and the, and doing the web store myself and all that kind of stuff, you know, um, it's still a very DIY band. Um, and I would still say it's a DIY band, despite us being on a relatively bigger label. Um, other than that, it's kind of, yeah, just me doing everything. Um, yeah, but that's uh, but that's probably. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a bit. I'm, I've been doing business myself since I was tw twenty something, and and uh, yeah. and you made these conscious decisions to 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 keep it as a one man show, uh, in order to enable you to live from the music. Because I mean, yeah. if you if you would have said, uh, okay, well, let's be five guys together, everybody has yeah. to live from it. Uh, I'll get someone to do the merch yeah. for me. Then you would probably have. Then there will be James, the IT guy, as well. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Um... That is one advantage of being the the solo project is that yeah I'm yeah the money is four times more five times more than if you have a a band that you, where you need to split it with five people or whatever. Mm. But yeah, I mean that I get like I said that wasn't really a conscious decision as well. That was just I mean that decision happened before I knew before I had any goals of making a living um, from music. So. Yeah, it, it was just starting a solo project. It was like a necessity because I didn't know anyone that was interested in a similar type of music. Mm. And then over the years, it, I found out that that's the way I like to work. Well, that I just prefer working on my own and working. Yeah, just this whole process, doing everything by myself is just the way I like to work. Uh, actually, an interview also that I saw with you where you mentioned that, uh, which you kind of touched up on now um, and leads me to the next thing because you you said that you you kind of kept on waiting for others to to find others to join you yeah. in a band and then you never found anyone that liked the same music or or, or had the skills or, yeah. or was interested so and that like because you're you live in the highlands in in scotland right mm. um, yeah. how, how is the metal scene around there and, and and in general maybe in scotland yeah right now i'm i know there's quite a few things happening like hardcore wise i'm i don't really know that kind of i don't really know that kind of music but i know I've seen quite a few like hardcore bands doing quite well and stuff, um, which is great. Um, metal wise, I think there's quite a strong death metal scene happening right now. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be kind of a, like an interest in death metal from like younger people getting into the scene and they're starting bands and local shows are happening quite regularly. And yeah, there are definitely bands and there are bands doing well. I think it's just. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like it often just takes, uh, I, I think, for me, like I don't want to blow some hot air up your ass, but uh, but people, it takes sometimes someone like you. I mean, if 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 young people see that, yeah, okay, this is actually possible, this path yeah. is doable, um, then that can actually, you know, out of that could come five to ten different acts yeah. later on. You know? Yeah, I hope so. I hope like that'd be killer to yeah to even inspire one person to even like metal or whatever so yeah if yeah i mean i know what you're saying and that'd be amazing like if that were the case um yeah, yeah. i i tell all the young people that i communicate with that are interested in music i'll tell them the hell ripper story about how, how you know how this is actually doable because yeah, yeah i think a lot of people see the obstacles and they see the the labels and the all the complicated stuff but actually if you're willing to do the work yourself yeah. and, and then the tools are available to you yeah you can. yeah in, in this in this 
era in this time you can absolutely mm. do everything yourself even yeah i mean even if you do things right and do in depending on the way you want to do things and all that how much time you want to invest you don't even really need labels for the most part of course labels are a big help in other ways but you know you can get your own music out there you can promote yourself you can put your stuff on spotify you can do shows um and all that without much outside help um so yeah it's yeah you've got to get into it for the right reasons as well though i think loads of people kind of ask me and the first thing they ask is like how can i sign to a label like how can i yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the wrong place to start yeah, yeah. I, I mean i've had people know that um how do you sign to a label i'm thinking of starting a band i'm like well start the band first man yeah. um yeah. if you want to do it to be known or famous or mm. or money or whatever um i think you're kind of already starting in the the wrong place so i would yeah focus on the music first and go from there mm -hmm. I would say. The, rest, <laughs> the rest will come if you work hard and, yeah. and pull the right thing uh is there any is there any band not necessarily scottish but like just in general is there any kind of up-and-coming band that you are super excited about yourself um yeah i would say a band like um devastator from from the uk as well they're kind of yeah, similar black speed kind of metal punk type stuff mm -hmm. they're doing well um who else i mean our drummer our live drummer max his band vacuous they're doing they're growing they're doing very well um mm -hmm. yeah for me i'm mostly listening to the the the, the speed the black speed black thrash mm -hmm kind of uh, style of music um i mean that's why hell replace plays that style of music it's my favorite kind so i'm really into that kind of stuff but yeah uh, uh, so what's what's next you said there are some summer gigs there are some festivals in the summer i guess we're doing like uh vac in party san bloodstock festivals um and then we're doing like a, a, a like a tour in between all of these in summer um which hasn't been announced yet but should be announced soon i think i don't know mm -hmm. um so we've got all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we're playing shows like throughout the whole year, you know, like almost every weekend until the end of the year now. We're like, um, we've got a little break now until like, I think it's April, the end of April. And then, yeah, starting there until the end of the year, it's like, yeah, kind of nonstop really. Um, but in between, and then, and then, and then you're going to write an album in between, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've already got quite a bit written and I'm, doing that now as well you know just in between everything and having this little two-month break is great to have that um so yeah i mean i've got about 15 songs or something like in various stages i've got one song like finished which is sounding cool um yeah we'll see what happens but yeah i hope to get the new album out next year 25 but you know i never know how my process will go you know i might get annoyed and delete everything that i've written um yeah, yeah. so yeah, I hope to have the new album out as soon as it's as soon as possible, really. And do you see that? Do you think that that album will be kind of in the similar way as the last one? Um, I would say so. Some of the songs are sounding like in a similar vein, but there are some new elements. Um, you know, some um, different things I'm trying. You know, I want to try. Like, there's some different time signatures which I've never really tried before. Uh -huh. Not dream, not dream theater level or anything, but like a just like these riffs that kind of work in a different time signature and um, but there has been a gradual change like in your music yeah. kind of from the first you know you've always kind of moved the envelope a little bit somehow yeah yeah, yeah. i try to keep things interesting for myself and mm. um the more i listen to different music and stuff i can incorporate different influences into the music and but yeah the, the album's going to be speed metal there's no yeah, yeah. i'm not i'm not getting away from from the style i'm not getting away from the hell ripper style you'll know it's hell ripper just yeah. maybe a few different things in there uh, <laughs> uh the last question i i told you before we started recording i i met with my personal trainer um this morning and he actually went to the gig to see you here in prague with me and and i asked him so if you had one question to ask james what would it be and he's a little bit spiritual so he uh, asked me uh what's his uh what's his purpose in life purpose um probably to create some speed metal um <laughs> i mean that's the the one thing that i'm i would say i'm any good at really um yeah i mean 
just personally i just i just try and do what makes me happy mm. and it seems that like create writing music not just speed metal but yeah writing music is what makes me happy and what i think i'm best at um other people might disagree but i'm yeah it's what makes me happy it's what i'm best at it's what i enjoy doing um yeah so writing music is like my purpose and then yeah. overall just to just to make myself happy and then enjoy things i guess <laughs> and, and 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 i mean i guess you see yourself doing this for you know you know like you you don't it's not so, like but... yeah i'm gonna work here five years and then i'm gonna have a new job you know like you yeah. you want to keep doing this i guess as long as you can yeah i hope so yeah i mean it's been like five years doing it like full time and 10 years doing it like just in general you know hell ripper's mm. been around for 10 years so yeah is hopefully it keeps going yeah i hope so as well i mean i'm going to see uh going to see Tutor of priest here in march i mean they they have been around since 70 something so maybe yeah. i don't know when i'm 120 i'll be seeing hell ripper and james yeah. Payne, you know <laughs> hopefully yeah uh, with judas priest yeah <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm not sure about that they they'll probably gone by then uh, thanks a lot for spending your time with Thank me you, and have a nice day so I hope you enjoy this. I would be very happy if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. Hellripper is one of those up-and-coming bands that I kind of discovered by accident. And a great way to do that is actually to subscribe to my weekly playlist that comes out on Spotify every Friday called The Weekly Fix. And you can find a link to that in the first comment below. Other than that, I have this video here with my concert review of the Hellripper concert or this one here with the next wave of metal bands that I think are about to break big in 2024. So I'll see you in those videos.